In Deuteronomy chapter 6, we have the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord gave to Moses for his people to observe in the promised land. And they were given for four specific purposes, that their children would fear the Lord so they could enjoy a long life, that their life would go well, and that they would increase greatly as the Lord had promised. God's promise to the children of Israel was a land flowing with milk and honey. And as they prepared to enter the land, God instructs them on how to live in it, not to restrict them or to oppress them, but to ensure that every bit of the promise he gave them would be fulfilled. See, the promise wasn't just about the land. It was also about his people. It was about their children. It was about their quality and length of life. It was about the environment they would live in and their growth as a people. What was required of them? The same thing that's required of you and I today. It's the foundation of this chapter, the basis of our relationship with God and the context of God's promises to his people. Jesus called it the greatest commandment. To the Hebrews, it was the Shema, and it's found in verses 4 and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Bible commentator David Guzik describes it as the classic Hebrew confession of faith, describing who God is and what our duty is towards him. It's a daily reminder that the Lord our God is the only God and there is no other. And because of who he is, our response is to love him completely. And this love is appropriate because he loves us completely. We love him because he first loved us. So here's God's will for your life and mine today. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength.